Hi and welcome to another installment of Math Basics with Mr. Besh. Today we're talking mean absolute deviation. Now this is the, uh, the average distance of the data values from the mean of the data. And, and here's the deal. What this truly does is this tells you whether your mean or average of your data set is good or bad. Whether it represents your data set well or it doesn't. Now, we learned in class about outliers, numbers that are either way big or way small, and they kind of mess up our average. And what this value does, this MAD score, tells us whether or not our mean is good or bad. Now, to calculate this, you take your data set and you put your data in order from smallest to largest. Now, notice my strategy here. I took and I counted, I got 18 values in my data set. Well, I split them up. I put 9 on top and I put 9 down on the bottom. Now the first thing you do when you calculate a MAD score is you got to find an average or a mean. To do this, you add up all your values, get you in your sum, which is 378, and then there were 18 numbers in your data set, 18 elements. So I take 378 divided by 18, and then I get an average or mean of 21. Now, what I got to do next is take the mean and compare it with each number in your data set. Find out how far they are apart and write that number down below each of the values. And I'm going to do this in red. So now I compare the 21 here with the 10. 21 and 10 are 11 values apart. So I write down the 11 below the 10. Then I do this with the 21 and the 14 and I continue my pattern until you see the following. Remember, 21 and 14 is a distance of 7. 21 and 14 again is 7. 21 and 16 is 5. And I continue this pattern over and over again for all 18 pieces of my data. Now, once I determine how far apart my mean is from each individual piece of data, I add up all my red numbers in this set. When I add them all up, I get 86. Now, what I'm going to do to calculate the MAD score is I take the sum of the difference between these values, and then I divide it by how many numbers there were. So 86 divided by 18, and now when I take 86 divided by 18, I get 4.7, and that is my MAD score. Now, to translate this, the smaller your MAD score or closer to zero you have, the better score you have. So a 4.7 is a very good MAD score. Now my rule of thumb is, if I have a MAD score less than 6, I consider it very good. If I got a MAD score from like, in that range, like less than 10, I consider it good. But when that MAD score starts getting into the teen digits, that means your values in your data set tend to be on average a lot further away from your mean and your mean might not best represent your data set. Sometimes the mode or median, the other measures of central tendency, might represent your data set better than the actual average or mean. And that's how you translate it. So again, a 4.7 on a, on a MAD score is pretty darn good. Remember, the closest you can get to zero, the better your mean, and the better it represents your data in your data set. And that's the MAD score. I hope you found this video both helpful and informative. 